As the son of Guinean immigrants who was born in Saudi Arabia, raised in New York, and has traveled all around the world, I've always been fascinated with the concept of home. They say home is where the heart is, but what about where it used to be, where it wants to be? This led me on a journey to explore the goals, struggles, and accomplishments of African immigrants who have returned home. Season one takes place in one of my countries of origin, the Republic of Guinea. In 1958, Guinea was the first West African country to say no to French colonial rule, becoming totally independent from France. The country's first president, Sekou Touré, famously said, we prefer freedom in poverty to wealth in slavery. This quote embodies the spirit of Guineans. Guinea is a mineral-rich country that has an abundance of diamonds, gold, precious metals, and contains 25% of the world's bauxite reserves. The opportunities are endless. Are you brave enough to come home? I sat down with the one and only Mako, an entrepreneur who relocated from the Bronx, New York, to explore new opportunities in Conakry, Guinea. Why did you ultimately decide to stay here? The main reason why I stayed in Guinea was to help develop Guinea in my own way, create opportunities for others, okay? We all go abroad, we study, we have the best educations, all right? What do we have to offer in America, for example? What do I have to offer in America? I know I could do a lot of things, but there's a lot of people like me, millions of people like me there that have studied the same thing that I've studied. It's not, in Guinea, a lot of people don't have that quality of education, you know. So you come here, you help them, you show them the way, you kind of guide them in a way yeah. and create opportunity, creating opportunities, what jobs and whatnot for them to feed their families. You know, we can't we can't just sit back. Me personally, I, can, I can't sit back and just see people, OK, relying on companies to come and invest in Guinea. We can all do something from scratch. You know, even if you have one employee, it counts because that employee probably feeds five or ten family members. OK, so that's that's something that made me want to stay in Guinea. And what are some of the other businesses that you've developed or opened or gotten into since these other jobs that you were doing in the mining? Um, for now, I have a company called IMS, International Management Services, which um, I do cons um, consulting in HSC field, okay? And we have an agro-business uh, section, which I started uh, farming pineapples. Um, as of now, I have probably about 6,000 pineapple. Okay, um, the goal for this year is probably 30,000. And then from there uh, to progress, okay. And also at the end of the year, I'm gonna start uh, farming peppers. Okay, so why pineapples and why peppers? Um, pineapple for one, it, it's very nutritious. It has a lot of fibers and whatnot, a lot of vitamins to it, and people enjoy it. Um, pineapples could be sold in Guinea or outside of Guinea. You know, so you have two advantages. That's one. Uh, imp you can export it. That's the second advantage. The third advantage is um, there's a second side of business to it, is which is the suckers. The suckers. Um, for people that don't know what sucker is, in French they call it rigé. That's the same thing that you replant to have the pineapples again. So when you grow, for example, you have one pineapple tree, it can grow up to two or three, okay? And then if you don't want to plant just one, you can resell it, and that's another revenue. Okay. Okay. Wow. So it's a, it, it's 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 a it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good business, but. It takes patience. Why? Because for a pineapple, to have a fruit of a pineapple is for a year and a half, 14 months, depending on how you, how you handle and how you kind of like occupy well the space and whatnot. So you have to wait a year and a half to, to, to have money. And coming back to your question on peppers. Peppers 
this cash flow thing. Okay, that's the reason why. I can't sit back and wait one year and a half to have revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so peppers, uh, the, the process is what, 45 days you have, uh, and then it starts growing, and then you plant it. Three months later, you have peppers. And then after that, I think it's every month or two months, you have peppers. So you can resell. And everybody, we're in Guinea, man. Everybody uses pepper. Which family do you know in Guinea that doesn't use pepper in their sauce? I don't know any family, but I know some people who don't eat pepper. I know, but but the majority of people, like we're, we're talking about the majority of people. Yeah, so. no, I, I, love, I love pepper from time to you time. Know, restaurants, time families, time. you know, everybody uses peppers. Yeah, it's, it's an, I feel like I should jump into this uh, agro business. You should. How, how did you get the land? Um, I, the land, a friend, a friend um, gave me a partial, um, a partial space because he's not using it. Because one of the reasons why I haven't, but I haven't had my own land yet, is because of unfortunately people are not are very dishonest. They like they mislead you into a lot of things. They they they'll come and they'll tell you, okay, this is my land. This is how much I'm gonna uh, sell it to you for. And then a couple of months later or a year later, somebody else comes by. Oh, you know, I'm his son. He didn't tell me. I was not okay with it. Or I'm his wife. You know. So there's a lot of conflict within that. And I don't want to put myself in that position because I don't have time to travel back and forth a country all the time and to handle all of those dramas. So I'm really taking my time and I have, and I have a friend that's assisting me mm -hmm. to get something that's legit, you know, really legit. How many employees do you have at the farm? Um, I have one person, I have one employee that's on the payroll. And all the other workers are like daily workers. When they come, they get paid daily. Probably like one on the payroll, probably about 20 other people. So it's about 21 people, so. You know. And how often do you go up there? I try to go there at least twice a month, at least. But I, <laughs> I have to make more efforts, but it's not easy with my job. Because sometimes with my job, you know, I have obligations. If they need me to stay work on Sunday, Saturday, I have to be there. How big is it? How big is it? Um, it's one hectare. Um, that's about 2.1, uh, 2 2.2 2 acres. And I'm only uh, occupying half of that for the moment. And how long has it been since you started? So when can I expect a pineapple? When can you expect? Uh, next year, somewhere around next year, because it's only been a couple of months. It's only been a couple of months. It's only been a couple of months. Yeah. I'll, accept, uh, I'll send you, I'll ship you some pineapples. Yeah, I would love some. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll be back at some yeah. point. Yeah, you know, hopefully, to, to hopefully next year. <laughs> hopefully next year I won't have to pay DHL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what advice do you have for other Guineans in the diaspora mm -hmm. who maybe want to come back to Guinea and start a business, but aren't sure yet? because they don't think that it'll be easy to find a job. I mean, if you want to start a business, you have to come with your plan. There's a lot of things that, that's here that's, you know, the door is open for everybody. Check out the next episode of Momo Dion Going Home.